Welcome back. As uh, so, uh, uh, in the previous uh, slide uh, and the uh, short movie, what uh, you see is that we have uh, different material. As we can say, the uh, the different sites. One was rocky, another was uh, soft sediments, and then we are having in water saturated sediments. So, effect of the the seismic seismic wave which is passed which passed through this area. Uh, rocky, soft and water saturated, so they will behave differently and the amplification, the effect of, of that seismic wave will be different at different point of form, point. Now, uh, in the previous uh, lecture which I was showing, showing that you know, how, why it is so important to map the active fault on the surface that is the surface rupture uh, is that without having the understanding one should not put the house right on the top of the uh, the fault scrap or the, the fault, fault line otherwise you can experience some total damage if there is a rupture. Of course, in the epicentral area the peak ground excitation will be extremely high but and along with that if you are if you know the uh, line of surface rupture or the fault line you need to avoid putting your structure on top of that. So, amplification will vary from place to place and as we were talking about that if you have uh, the loose sediments mostly closer to the river valleys or the, the alluvial plains or the flood plains, you may experience a, a severe liquefaction phenomena. So, uh, seismic shaking, amplification and duration, this is an example from Mexico. The concern was mostly about the uh, the population because most of the population, uh, uh, the settlements we will come across we will be in the the alluvial plains because of several reasons for the water resource and uh, also for the fertile land and all that. So large portion of the Mexican city sits on the bed of Lake Texaco. Since European settlements way back in 520 AD, okay. uh, the area provides flat terrain. This is one reason which I was talking. Fertile soil, ideal for the settlement. So any settlement, even if you go back and try to look at the Indus Valley civilization, most of the sites were along the um, uh, adjacent to the riverbed, and this is one of the reason. Uh, even today. Uh, you will see the a thickly pop, thick population is in the Indo-Gangetic plain because of the flat terrain, fertile land, water uh, is easily available. So people of course have more uh, try to settle down in such areas. But this terrain and thick lake deposit lead to one amplification of the seismic wave and extended the duration of the seismic shaking from uh, the earthquakes. So, this is another added problems which we will experience and usually people experience if they are in the, uh, the alluvial plain areas. So, will one will be amplification, second because of the amplification you will see more the duration of the shaking will increase. So, this example if you look at uh, from the uh, the effect of seismic energy amplified due to 1985 earthquake having its epicenter located about 400 kilometer away from the Mexican city. So, Mexican city is located here and this is a schematic diagram. The earthquake was triggered somewhere here epicenter which was almost 400 kilometer. So, what would have been expected is that in the epicenter area maximum damage should have occurred and the duration would have been larger here, but that did not happen. The, the amplification was comparatively higher 400 kilometers in the away from the epicentral area that is in the maximum city. And the reason was what we were talking about in the previous one that the whole city or the settlement is sitting on the lake deposit. 
and the duration was also much much higher as compared to what was experienced in the epicentral area whereas in between in some regions the the peak ground excitation was comparatively lesser but even uh, of 400 kilometers the peak ground excitation was much much higher so the the important part is how far we are setting will be one criteria of course but what are the deposits underlying deposits that will be the most important parameter one should understand so if you are sitting on the hard rock of course you are to some extent safe you will not experience the uh, the amplification but if you are sitting uh, on 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 softer material or your buildings are sitting on the softer material even though you are sitting away from the epicentral area you are bound to experience peak ground excitation will be much much higher now this is another uh, um, example uh, which we, uh, will clear your understanding about the the seismic shaking so change in the field loading conditions as the energy that is a seismic wave propagates towards the surface upward from the hypocenter okay. it changes and slowly what happens is that over the time you will have uh, the deformation because of the cyclic stress so this will go back and forth back and forth and that will result into your increase in pore water pressure complete compaction of the water saturated deposits or the material now here uh, rho prime uh, is your or sigma prime is your initial effective stress vertical overburden and tau is your horizontal cyclic shear stress so if duration is much higher then the the effect will be much much higher so loosely uh, packed uh, deposits will have larger pores filled up with water but yes of course this should be water saturated if it is not water saturated then chances are less to enter into the liquefaction phenomena so near the surface if you are having uh, 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 unliquefied layers like clay and then or these and the fine silty sand but 2 meters you are having uh, porous deposits like sand cohesionless saturated with water water that will result into the liquefaction so liquefaction usually take place where the sediments are cohesionless are completely saturated it depends on the relationship of the cyclic shear stresses developed by earthquake shaking and the amount of stress required to trigger the uh, liquefaction depth of the occurrence of liquefaction varies from few meters up to tens of meters okay. but below this up to 10 meter if you are having like chances are a bit less but of course you will have the liquefaction will not reach right up to the surface it will Uh, within the subsurface layers because of the overburden but below that you will not be able to experience much of the liquefaction development of liquefaction is highly difficult at greater depth the reason is because of increase in normal static effective stress which will increase the resistance of the sediments to shear or deform because it will be difficult to share the material which is sitting at the greater depth so what we see here is is the schematic diagram which talks about the non liquefiable layer with low permeability and this is an porous layer or the liquefied layer mostly the cohesionless sent but water saturated so when the cyclic shear Uh, affect the sediment package here will result into increase in pore water pressure and this liquefied material will be poured out through either through conduit in a form of a 
fan blow and this phenomena is very much similar to what we see in the volcanic eruptions now sometime it has been also seen because for if we need to do uh, the seismic microzonation then uh, we try to take number of bore holes and then we study the stratigraphy and we also try to understand that how thick is this unit that is the unit which is which will be prone to liquefaction and which is a non liquefiable unit so this is your h1 and this is your h2 so this also will be if this is very thick then you need more of uh, the peak ground exudation to break this unit if this is thin then even with the lesser ground shaking you will be able to experience the uh, the liquefaction and the threshold limit to trigger the liquefaction is uh, with the earthquake of magnitude uh, 5.5 if you have okay, then it is quite likely that you will experience a liquefaction if a site is idle then idle site is what we we have discussed is that we should have an like a uh, cohesive plus sediments b you have like water saturated and then c you should have and capping of non non liquefied unit that is your h1 and this one will be your h2 so this is an ideal condition which uh, we should have and even with the magnitude of 5.5 you will be able to trigger the liquefaction these are few examples which talks about uh, that how uh, the paleo liquefaction or the liquefaction which took place or triggered by the pre uh, previous earthquakes will look like so this is an, again a section as we were looking at the sections of uh, faulting events or the ruptures along the active fault this is the similar to that but this is for liquefaction now these are the craters which have been formed and these are the conduit which broke this units and they have they have brought the material from subsurface and when such depressions are been created on the surface because of the strong ground shaking and some point of time you see also the deposition which is taking because it is a depression so material will come into the depression and will get deposited but one inter interesting thing which you should mark here is that when uh, the liquefy uh, the, the the material with the high pore, pore pressure moves up through the conduit it breaks uh, this unit okay because it is coming up here so what you see here is the broken disoriented fragments of Uh, layer one, uh, or sorry, the, the unit C. So in this, you the the broken fragments are been seen disoriented. So this we we say the rip up class. Okay, so we are having class which are been broken from the the overlying units when the uh, the material or the liquefiable material is moving uh, towards the surface. And this also helps us in identifying uh, that uh, this conduit. is uh, is the feeder dike for the or the feeder conduit for the liquefiable material coming right up to the surface even if you are having uh, the liquefaction taken taking place in the deeper part and they may not reach right up to the surface but they are die out uh, in getting liquefied material right? like it is it, it gets along the uh, the sedimentary layers which we call cells So this is an example from liquefaction from uh, uh, Andaman, where you can uh, 
I will I'll show in one slide. So we exposed the sediment succession in Andaman after 2001, uh, 2004 Andaman Sumatra earthquake and looking for the tsunami deposits but we, we came across very beautiful like fraction features also. So here uh, you see the class fitting in this uh, uh, clay bed. So this is a class which I was showing is similar to the, uh, the conduits and this is a dike which is coming up very beautiful one. So this is the source uh, unit and this is a conduit which is coming up and, and depositing. So this is a very small scale crater and uh, or the sand sand blow which was been formed because of the previous earthquake but this was not related to 2004 Sumatra Andaman but this is an older event uh, by older earthquake uh, which resulted into the or caused the lake fraction in this region. Similarly you can see the class here of this same uh, uh, clay bed and this is the sand which was been poured out because of the strong ground shaking. Again this is not related to the 2004 but in the previous uh, large magnitude earthquake in this region. Surface manifestation uh, um, of liquefaction features what we saw from the subtle radar topographic mission data in just after the 2001 Bhuj earthquake. In most of the areas which was water saturated or near surface water saturated sediments were available or the units were available, we saw that the water was been poured out in the great run of Kutch. And many people started talking about that the ancient uh, dry bed of Saraswati is now revived because of this water coming right up to the surface. But this was a temporary phenomena, this was not a permanent phenomena. And as I discussed that there will be a strong ground shaking and the material, the porous material which are saturated will get, will be compacted and because of the high pore water pressure, uh, the, the water will be almost ejected out on the surface. Okay. So I will stop here and uh, we will continue in the next lecture, uh, trying to see more uh, signatures of the lake fraction and uh, uh, as I told that this is a very important part, of course we need to know that what type of material on which our construction has been done uh, and how far we are sitting from the resource. Thank you so much.